You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The road to a championship is built on years of practice and hard work. That's true in basketball and the construction industry. The apprenticeship and upgrade training programs provided by the Athens Area Union Building Trades produces the workforce with the most modern skills and cutting edge knowledge in the industry. The key to success to the Bobcats on the floor is the same as your choice on the work site. The winning move is working with members of the Athens Area Union Building Trades, proud sponsor of Ohio University Basketball. At People's Bank, our vision is to be the best community bank in America. We focus on building relationships with our clients and offering cutting-edge financial products. People's Bank is proud to support the local communities in which we work and live. This is Ashley Brown, People's Bank Vice President and Regional Manager, and we would love a chance to earn your business. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good time. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this 
because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax-free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. Welcome to the Ohio softball field in the beautiful Athens, Ohio. And we've got some softball on tap today. It is game number two of this three-game set between the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. I'm Ethan Sargent. Alongside me is Carl Blaylock. Carl, last yesterday we had a phenomenal game on our hands. 7-2 victory for the Bobcats. What would you see that you liked in that game? Well, for the Bobcats, the difference in the game was the fi the five-run sixth inning that the Bobcats were able to put together. Central Michigan scored their first run of the game in the top of the sixth, making it a two-to-one ball game, and the Bobcats exploded in the bottom of the sixth with a triple by Juhas and then England and McMenery homering twice. Yeah, and those were all with two outs as well. It was a two-out rally where all of those runs ended up coming in. So it really was a dramatic end to that inning. Uh, it's a little bit cloudier, a little bit chillier today than it was yesterday. It dropped in right around, right around low, maybe low mid 50s today, and it's a windy again as well. Uh, a little bit more overcast today as well. Bobcats are in their green uniforms, all green, and Central Michigan has broken out the pinstripes as the first pitch from Mackenzie Cole is fouled up and back by Shannon Smith, who homered Janet in. Stein. Or Stein, sorry. <laughs> Shannon Stein, who uh, homered in the, in the top of the seventh yesterday. Mackenzie Cole sparkling outing yesterday, pitched all seven innings, was lights out, only two runs on six hits. And it was a very good outing. And there's another pitch for strikeout. And very quickly, Stein is behind 0 and 2. That was a beautiful pitch there. Just caught the just caught the inside of the plate. Beautiful pitch. Let's see if Cole will go back to that. And now here comes the payoff. And that one's just a little bit outside. It is now a 1 and 2 count. Cole was absolutely brilliant yesterday, but the biggest, the biggest story of that game was that big bottom of the sixth. Just when Central Michigan had hung in there all game and you felt like, you know, it could be a very nervy um, t top of the seventh for Kenzie Cole instead the Bobcat offenses. There's a pop-up from Stein into shallow left field that is caught, and the Bobcats have their first out. Yeah, first out for Cole. Cole had six strikeouts yesterday, and she got ahead in the count in this one. Let's see if she can get... Ahead of the second batter of the day, Abby Tolmy. 
Yeah, McMenemy made the catch on that play. And there was some sparkling defense yesterday from the Bobcats that really helped preserve a few runs. And McMenemy and Spotcheck are the two names that really stand out to you in that infield as that first pitch of the at-bat is a bit high. So 1-0 and count for Abby Tolmy, who had a couple hits herself yesterday. Yeah, Tomey was uh, that was a close, ball. very close on the outside corner. There were a couple of those yesterday from the umpiring crew. Yeah, Tomey yesterday batted two for three and scored a run. Also struck out though. Cole's pitch once again is just a little bit off the outside corner. So 3-0 and oh now for Abby Tolmey as Central Michigan tries to get their first runner on base. Cole, the biggest reason why she was so successful yesterday is because she was able to get ahead in a lot of counts, get a lot of 0-1s, 0-2s, and force hitters. But this did happen a couple times where she did walk a few batters. As there is a first walk of the game for Mackenzie Cole, Tolmey takes a four-pitch walk and... The Chippewas have the first base runner of the day, and yeah. Abby told me. Cole only walked three yesterday, so we'll have to see if hopefully she'll be able to keep this as a singular event in this inning. And now McKaylee Valamont up to bat for the Chippewas. She's got a .355 average, 10 RBIs on the season. And she swings at the first pitch and fouls it back off of the netting. On the base pass, Tomey doesn't run very much, has not had a stolen base yet this year. Yeah, the Bobcats had a couple yesterday. Central Michigan didn't attempt any stolen base tries, as that one is also swung on and fouled back near the Ohio dugout. And it's a quick 0-2 count here for Mackenzie Cole to work with. Yeah, Valamont was just a bit early on that pitch there and just kind of fouled it off a little bit. They're going to switch out balls here. As Brooke Rice behind the plate. Yesterday was her birthday. She ended up getting a hit later on in the game during that. She was the one who jump-started that, uh, that, that with a double in the sixth to get that scoring started in the bottom of the sixth and get that, get that proverbial party started as Cole with the payoff. And that's a little high. One and two. Mackenzie Cole to McKaylee Balamont. Yeah, if you can hear, it's a little bit windy here today. Wind blowing across the field from left to right. Yeah, it's swirling just kind of like it was yesterday. It's just blowing kind of an out to right today. It was blown out to left yesterday. As that's another one swung on good contact, <laughs> but straight pretty much right at the Ohio dugout again. So fouled off. Count remains at one and two. Again, Balamont again early on that pitch there. Needs to slow down a little bit, swing a little bit later. I'd, I'd bring a little bit of heat if I was Cole here. Yeah, we saw how Cole could get creative with her payoffs, as this could be two. The, the throw is over to first, and then not in time. They get the out at second. It was a good play from Juhas to be able to scoop that up, and it's very tough to turn double plays in softball just because of how short the base paths are. And Juhas does a good job. Uh, McMenemy came over and covered second. Got the out at second. So on a fielder's choice, um, Valamont reaches. And now it will be Skyler Coberly up to bat. Two outs. Runner on first base. And that is way upstairs. 1-0. Coberly in yesterday's game, 0 for 2 with a walk, left two runners on base. Yeah, she was. She did come up to bat in some big spots. Couldn't come through, but she comes through here. There's a base hit into center field. Runner gets to second. Coberly's got a hit, and Central Michigan is knocking on the door here early in this one. Two outs, runners on first and second. Valamont is currently on second. Coberly with that base hit is up to first. That was just really good piece of hitting there from Skylar Coberly. Yes, it was. 
And pretty much right back over the head of Mackenzie Cole. So now a little bit of a dual threat player up to the plate now for Central Michigan in Kaylin Britton. Yeah, she homered yesterday, and she's got a lot of power. We saw it with that home run. And there's a good pitch from Cole. 0 mm -hmm. oh and 1, the count. As she's just looking to get this final out and get out of the inning. Yeah, not only does Britton, not only does Britton hit the ball, but she also is a pitcher for this Chippewa squad. Yeah, we, we didn't see her yesterday. We only saw two pitchers in the end. It was Leto. As that is a high fly ball. It's leaning foul, and it is caught over there on the wall by Caitlin Fogue. And the Bobcats get out of a little bit of an early jam. It is 0-0 as we head to the bottom of the first. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Welcome back to Ohio softball field, where it is currently 0-0. Zero to zero. We've just gotten this one underway. You haven't missed much if you're just tuning in. Now, Ohio was able to get out of a little bit of a first inning jam, and they will now take their lead here in the bottom of the first. And a new pitcher today for the Central Michigan Chippewas, it is Caitlin Bean, redshirt junior out of Oxford, Michigan. Um, currently has a 4.24 ERA with a 4-8 win-loss, 72.2 innings pitched, and a 1.84 strikeout to walk ratio. So another tough pitcher for the Bobcats to contend with. They were able to get to Grace Leto yesterday as um, England showed bunt there on her at-bat. She homered yesterday in the Bobcats' win. So, Carl, how can the, the Bobcats attack Caitlin Bean here at the plate? Well, Bean, Bean is a tough pitcher. She was all freshman, la all MAC freshman, last year. So we'll see. We'll see what she can do as she'll deliver this. Anglin gets good contact, but it is a good play over there in center field by Abby Tolmy, who is able to track that one and catch it. Good contact from Anglin, but not enough to get a base hit. So Caitlin Bean's got her first out of the game. And Yasmin Logan now up to bat for the Bobcats. I'd say I'd say for uh, the Bobcats trying to get to Bean, just keep making contact like that. That was hard contact. Uh, I mean, it took it took Tommy all the way back to the track. So that's something you can keep continue. So big cut and miss from Yasmin Logan there on the first pitch of the at bat. So 0-1. Anglin got really good contact, as you said. It was floated out. Tommy was a little bit worried for a second. She was. Moving back with some speed, but in the end, she was able to make the play. As Logan's second pitch is also a strike looking there down the middle, so a quick 0-2 count here for Caitlin Bean as she tries to get the Bobcats out of this inning fast. Logan has had a problem with strikeouts this year. 18 strikeouts on the year so far, only 21 hits. And the payoff is just a bit high. So one and two for Logan. Logan had herself a hit yesterday. But she also struck out as well yesterday. The double-edged sword. Bean's pitch is swung on. It's a pop fly 
into shallow right, and it is, wow, what a play. Over the top there by Lucy Cronin. It was just in that awkward kind of sea of uncertainty in between second baseman and the right fielder. Um, and in the end, Cronin was just able to kind of lean back and grab that one. It was a tough, awkward play in the end. Yeah, she but bobbled she it. it. She bobbled it a little yeah. bit for a second there, but luckily she, was able, she was able to hold on to it. Communication is so key, and we talked, me and uh, Cedric talked about this yesterday. Central Michigan really prides themselves on being one of the best fielding teams in the league, a .970 fielding percentage. As there's a strike from Bean, she's dealing early. As Megan McMenemy is up to bat, she was one of the players of the game yesterday, had herself a big part in that sixth inning rally. She was three for three on the day with three RBIs, had a home run, a sack fly, and a run. As that one is swung on, oh. and there's a great play by fir at first base by Shannon Stein, and that'll do it for the first inning. Bobcats go down in order. We'll be right back with Central Michigan's offense. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. in Athens, Ohio. Another lovely spring day here as we've got some great softball on our hands. We've got 14 innings plus potentially of softball today and we're in just the second inning of the first game of this doubleheader between Ohio and Central Michigan. We talk about importance. This game is crucially important in terms of the max standings. Miami is currently the class of the conference right now with a 14-2 conference record. That those two were both losses to Ohio as Cole's first pitch of the at bat is high, 1 0. Ohio is right, right there, right behind Miami with a 10 and 5 conference record. And then Bowling Green currently sits right in front of Central Michigan with a 7 and 5 conference record. Ohio and Central Michigan actually have the exact same record as that is swung on. It is high and far, and it is gone. Central Michigan taking early lead. Kelsey Alexander. It's Kelsey Alexander with the bomb straight out into center. That's her sixth home run of the year. She even got one against the Wolverines of Michigan. Yeah, that was their game before yesterday's game. And Central Michigan have an early lead here at Ohio Softball Field. It is 1-0. And Mackenzie Cole gave up a couple home runs yesterday. And it continues again today. It was probably her only blemish on the day. But it's going to be a little bit more up of an uphill battle today, clearly, as now Central Michigan looking to keep the attack up now. As now it's Emily Bracamonte up to the plate. But as I was saying before, I was interrupted by that absolute bomb. Central Michigan, are it's this is a crucially important series in terms of the conference standings. Um, the winner of this series will probably put themselves to be right there in that fight for my, with Miami to be near the top of the conference. And since Ohio got the first game yesterday, Central Michigan will be looking to take both today. And the count is one and one as Cole deals. And it is popped up straight back to the mound pretty much. Ooh. And in the end, Paoli comes over and kind of takes it straight out of Mackenzie Cole's uh, glove, but no matter, the ball was caught, and the Bobcats get the first out of the inning. Yeah, if I'm if I'm Kenzie Roark though, I, I, I you got to stress your players. You got to 
be able to communicate there, you definitely don't want to have a possible collision, especially involving your pitcher. Yeah. I mean, they had something like that yesterday. We did, yeah. And um, it was, yeah, it was uh, Walker and I believe it was Jonas colliding and Walker um, in the end. Hopefully she's feeling a little bit better today. She's not in the lineup. Now up to bat is Bracamonte here. She is, and that is just a little bit inside. A two and oh count with the one out. Or my apologies, it's no longer Bracamonte up to bat. It's, it's Lucy Cronin. Cronin. <laughs> Good bounce back by Cole after giving up the home run to get the little pop out there. And that one is fouled back. First strike of the at bat, two and one. Yeah, that was not a strike, but Conan kind or excuse me, Cronin kind of just reached at it there, and it was it was a good bit outside of the zone, but she reached at it and fouled it back since it really was not a good angle for a hit. Yep. Yeah, I think this is a big point of emphasis when we talk to. Uh, when we, we talked to Coach McCall Salmon, Salmon yesterday, um, she talked about how she really wants the focus to be that there can be offense from anywhere in this lineup, not just the top. You know, they think that their strength is in the top of the lineup, but they want offense from everywhere. And this is the sort of moments where, you know, you get, you know, a home run from your number six hitter in Kelsey Alexander, and then, you know, now players like Cronin, Samantha Mills, who's batting next to try and generate some offenses. There's a walk issued by Cole, her second of the game. And the Chippewas have another base runner here with one out. And uh, there will be a little bit of a meeting here on the mound as uh, Brooke Rice will go over to Cole and Cole and will try to uh, just maybe settle things down a little bit, try and figure out some of the command issues. Uh, she's definitely pitched a, little, a few more balls than strikes today. So it was a quick meeting. Nothing yeah. too drastic. And now it is Mills as the number nine hitter for the Chippewas up to the plate. Yeah, Mills Mills bats 167 coming into the weekend. Ha has started most of the games last year, but I mean, in 33 games, only has three singles. Cole's first pitch is high, ball one. It was close, it was right there. Mills had to check her swing there to get it. I mean, you got her thinking about that. You put it just a little bit lower and she'll swing at that. Yeah, so Central Michigan did not lead at all in yesterday's game. As that was close. Rice has a, has a great arm. We saw it a few times yesterday where she was able to, you know, kind of just gun it over to second to check a runner. And she does it again right there, just keeping Lucy Cronin honest over there on first base, not letting her stray too far away as spot check is ready over there as Cole deals. And that's again, just a little bit outside. Two and one is the count. One out here in the top of the second. It's Chippewas one, Bobcats nothing after the home run earlier in the inning by Alexander. This, this could be two. Dribbled over to second. The tap on second base. And so it's basically the same sort of play that happened in the first inning. Uh, McMenemy was able to make the play, step on second to stop the runner getting into scoring position. But the runner on first does get there. It's very difficult to turn two on a softball field. Yeah. As now Stein is up to the plate as the Chippewas have batted through the order here in two innings. Yeah, Stein flew out to uh, the shortstop out in shallow right field. Ooh. And this one is popped up into shallow left field about, and about it is the caught. Yeah, basically the about same. About the same play they had. The exact same the play. First Mc at bat for Stein. Yeah, McMenemy makes the play. The Bobcats get out of it. But they do give up a home run to Kelsey Alexander. So the Bobcats trail as they go back to the bats. We'll be right back after a quick break. Warehouse Tire in Athens is your locally owned and operated auto and truck tire center. 
At Warehouse Tire, we focus on customer service with a professional staff and a huge inventory of wheels and tires for a variety of applications, including farm and industrial. We feature top brands, including Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. Warehouse Tire is also a full-service auto service shop. Let us help with all of your under-vehicle maintenance, including brakes, shocks, struts, and alignments. Visit Warehouse Tire on Hebbardsville Road in Athens or online at warehousetireinc.com. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, $1 will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Ohio University Athletics. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Ohio trying to generate some offense here in the bottom of the second. Caitlin Bean had the Bobcats number in that bottom of the first. Pretty much getting the side out in order. And now the cleanup hitter will be up for the Bobcats and Analia Paoli. I mean, sometimes, sometimes with this, I mean, it's it's a new pitcher for the Chippewas. And it's somebody, it takes a little bit, it takes a few times to see her pitches to figure out what she's got. As Paoli swings and misses at that first pitch. Paoli is one of the best batting averages in the whole of the MAC. Um, she was hit by a pitch yesterday, went one for three. And she is also very, just a very consistent hitter, as you can kind of tell by that batting average. 17 RBIs on the year as well, as I think she did go around did on that go. one. It looked like she went around. So Paoli quickly behind to Bean, 0 and 2. Bean's hammering that outside of the plate and kind of locking up Paoli on just borderline calls there that Paoli's not sure whether she should swing at or not. Yeah, generating a lot of swing and misses early here for the Bobcats. As that is oh. a strike three looking for Analia Paoli. Bean with a really tidy at bat there as she gets the first out of the inning and her first strikeout of the game. And one out for the Bobcats is now Sophia Bernard up to bat for the Bobcats. She moved up one spot in the batting orders from yesterday. And she hit a home run yesterday in this inning. And it was a solo shot, and it gave the Bobcats a 1-0 lead. As this one is fouled over pretty much, yeah, right over by the Central Michigan bullpen. 0-1. Oh Bernard, Bernard has a good amount of power. Four home runs on the year, including the one yesterday. Eight RBIs on the year. Yeah, she had a very, she had a good day yesterday at the plate. And that pitch is outside, ball one. Just looked like an off-speed pitch there that kind of just got a little bit away from being there. Just trailed off a bit outside. Junior from Jackson High School in Clinton as that is a base hit ripped into right field as she's digging for second and she's got herself a double. So Sophia Bernard stays hot at the plate and the Bobcats have their first base runner of the day. Yeah. And yeah, really good piece of hitting. Just the power number. She put it right straight, a bullet right to the 210 sign out in uh, right center field, pretty much one hopped it and an easy stand up double for Bernard. Like I said, the power numbers, it's her fourth double of the year. Yeah, now this is somebody you do not want to see with runners in scoring position and that is Caroline Spacek, 25 ribbies on the year, a 310 average. So you would be scared here if you're Central Michigan as that's a good pitch to respond there from Caitlin Bean, she gets Bocek looking on the first pitch of the at-bat, 0-1. Oh and that is Ooh. fouled back into the stands here at kinda OSF. Kind of got jammed there 
right on the inside. Good job to fight it off, but now an 0-2 hole for Spacek. Yep, exactly where you want to hit her if you're a pitcher. Spacek sparkles in the field as well, .966 fielding percentage. Was Mac all defensive team last year. She made some great plays yesterday as that pitch is outside. She had the, the one play that really stood out to me yesterday, if anybody was watching, was the, the double play the Bobcats had, and I believe it was the top of the third, where McMenemy was able to p a catch a kind of – line drive right at her and the base runner was just off the base at first a bullet over to spot check who was able to get on the base spot check checks her swing there two and two the count now yeah that, we're seeing a lot of quite a few more balls with Bean this inning she's having to pitch it a lot better now that ohio's seen most of her pitches they're able to kind of gauge what to get better and so she's going to have to expand their zone a little bit try to get him to chase some things as that is low, the ball is away from the catcher. And as some heads up face running there from Sophia Bernard, she gets over to third base. And now pretty much any ball into the outfield will score Sophia Bernard with one out. Full count now at the plate, too. Perfect position for Spotchak. Good job fighting back after being down 0-2 in this at bat. Yeah, great job, great. As the payoff is swung on and fouled back to Ooh. over the Central Michigan dugout and into the stands. Uh, bounced all the way down in the stands. Almost got somebody in the back of the head. Bounced against the back of the stands and then just rolled all the way down. So 3-2 the count. A big spot here for Ohio, who have finally been able to get some offense on Caitlin Bean. The pitch swung on and fouled back, and that one is heading way out of OSF. It's a good job by uh, Spotcheck just continuing to fight against Bean. This is the most pitches Bean's had in that bat just because yeah. Spotcheck's been able to get contact on the ball. It hasn't been solid enough contact, but it's contact enough to keep her in the at bat. Yep, ninth pitch of the at bat coming right here. And it's swung on and mashed all the way into center field, and it is caught, and the throw will not be in time. The Bobcats respond in the bottom of the second. An RBI sack fly from Caroline Spachek brings home Sophia Bernard, and this game is tied at one. It's a beautiful, beautiful fly there, just out right on the track, out in center field. I think if it would have been a little bit closer, it might have been a little bit iffy to see if Bernard could have gotten back, but yep. with it being on the track, the perfect spot for a sack fly. Yep. Exactly what you would want if you cannot get a hit. Yeah, good piece of hitting there from Caroline Spacek, who picks up her 26th RBI of the year. Caitlin Fogue fouls off that first pitch there. Yeah, Fogue did not start yesterday. She's playing in the outfield, replacing Walker, who was injured in yesterday's game. Uh, she's got a 233 average on the year with 13 RBIs, three homers. And she is quickly down 0-2 here to Bean. Good atmosphere here today. I mean, it's an important MAC game. Yeah, Central Michigan's brought a decent contingency as that pitch is high, one and two. Yeah, you know, OSF always brings the heat. It's always a, a fun atmosphere. You know, uh, they're handing out chocolate milk before today's game. Gotta mm -hmm. love that. It was some great chocolate milk, my, my, I might say. But, um, it's just, I mean, it's a beautiful way to spend your uh, Easter weekend Saturday. And that one is mashed into center field. It's up and what Whoa! a play in center field by Abby Tolmy to end the inning. It looked like it was just going to eek over her head, but Tolmy went up and just snagged it out of the air. And Central Michigan escaped while only giving up one run, but the one run has tied this game. Bobcats immediately respond after the Central Michigan run in the top of the second. We'll be right back with the third inning. Located on 741 East State Street, Steak and Shake is serving up handmade milkshakes, fresh pressed steak burgers, and crispy shoestring fries cooked right to order. 
Kick off your day with our breakfast served until 11 a.m. And don't forget to join us for happy hour drinks and shakes on weekdays from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. Left corner for three. Bang! And oh, baby, what a first half it's been. In sight, it must be right. We'll see you there at Steak and Shake Athens. If you can dream it, you can do it. Maybe your dream is to have a vacation cabin in the woods. Or maybe your dream is to open up a cat cafe. Uh, who ordered the milk? At Ohio University Credit Union, your dreams are our dreams, and we have the money to lend that will make them a reality. OUCU offers great loan rates, flexible terms, and fast responses on your application. Not a member? You can join. Really, stop by a branch or visit OUCU.org. Equal housing opportunity, loan subject to credit approval, fairly insured by NCUA, MLS number 433809. Well, it's been an action-packed first couple of innings here at OSF as we're currently deadlocked at one here between the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. And the player who just ended the last inning is now up to bat in Abby Tolmey with a sparkling defensive play over there in center field. Yeah, it's just a backhanded catch tracking at her, tracking back as there's a strike by Cole. Cole! Cole and Rice talked with was talking with Roark pretty much the entirety after the last inning between between the in the middle of the second. They spent pretty much the entire inning sitting there talking with Roark, figuring stuff out, and it looks like they figured it out at least early with the strike. Yeah, that was a good pitch, and that's fouled off. So Tolmy is behind 0 and 2. You know, we like to refer to that, you know, on most of the major networks as a web gem. Definitely think that one qualifies. Oh, for uh, sure. Great, great catch over her head. It really did look like it was going to eke over her head for a, what could have been potentially, you know, a double or even more. I mean, what's even more impressive is, I mean, as we said, she was second team Hall Mac last season as a freshman. She's only a sophomore, Ethan. Yeah, she's going to be dominating for a long time. As there's a hit softly to Paoli over at third, and she makes the out to spot check at first. Bobcats get the first out of the inning. G53 on the scorecard for that one. Just a easy hit little one. Pretty easy for pretty easy for Paoli to charge and throw it over to spot check at first. Yeah, good play by Paoli, routine, but nothing is ever really routine in softball. Got to make sure you make sure you're on top of every play. As that one is a little bit inside. Ball 1. Yeah, that, that was a really, really close call there. Must have just been a little bit inside. A little bit, a little bit questionable by some of the fans over to our left here, but it was just hitting the chalk a little bit, and they call it a ball. 1-0 pitch is swung on and fouled uh, down the third baseline. Yeah. So 1-1. One one. Valamont really early on that. Valmont had a uh, fly out in the first. Uh, fielder's choice, I believe. Oh, no, 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 yeah, it was the, the fielder's choice where she um, she gave it to McManamy. It looked like, you know, one of those close double plays potentially as that one is another very close pitch. Uh, you can hear the chagrin of some of the Ohio softball fans in and around us. Um, two and one count. for Valamont in this battle with Mackenzie Cole, who, as we mentioned earlier, pitched a really good game yesterday. As that one is swung on and hit straight at Juhas at second base, two outs. So now it's Coberly up to bat. She's hoping to get a little bit of jump start for the offense. Had 10 doubles last year, led the team with that. So far this year, only four, but hoping that she could get her fifth here to jump start some offense for the Bob, or excuse me, for the Chippewas. That was a real close. Just yeah. missed, just a little high. Yep. 17 RBIs on the season for Coverly. The red shirt sophomore from Bay City Central High School. Once again, the Bobcats in their 
green jerseys today. The green with the black stripe with the Bobcats in the front. As that one is popped up into shallow second base and Juhas makes the play. So the Bobcats in the end with a fairly routine top of the third. And when we come back, we'll see the Bobcats at the plate once again. When you order your groceries online with ClickList from Kroger, you can do your shopping anytime, anywhere, like the gym, the office, or your favorite comfy couch. And whether you place your order on your phone, tablet, or computer, it's still your neighborhood Kroger. So you'll find all the fresh choices, low prices, and great deals you love. And you'll save time, too. Try ClickList from Kroger with same-day pickup. Check it out at Kroger.com. Fresh food, low prices at Kroger. These days, we're all doing a lot more virtually, which is why at Ohio Health, we've expanded our virtual care options and availability to make it even easier to get safe expert care at home. That includes virtual visits with over a thousand trusted providers in every medical specialty. Learn more about our virtual health options at ohiohealth.com slash virtual health. softball field where we have a 1-1 game on our hands. And a dance-off in the and crowd as a, you hear the roar. A dance-off <laughs> for the ages during the commercial break. Um, truly was a spectacle. The wind is starting to pick up a little bit here in Flags Athens. Full extension down the left field line. It's blowing um, out, definitely blowing out towards, uh, towards right, kind of into foul territory almost. And the Bobcats will go back to the plate after generating some offense in the last inning, thanks to some good hitting from, uh, from Sophia Bernard and Caroline Spacek. They were able to generate a run. And now Brooke Rice is up to bat, uh, the Mason, Ohio native. 306 average, uh, the catcher for the Bobcats. She's quickly behind 0-1. The 0-1 pitch is swung on and missed. Really, really good pitch there by uh, by Bean. Just, that rise just ball. outside. Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard to hit those. I mean, they're just coming up, and it's just so hard to even ge just to generate contact is difficult. Um, it's a very, very hard pitch to hit as her 0-2 pitch from Bean is a punch out, strike three looking, and Bean's got her second strikeout of the game. Both looking. Yeah. Second now, straight inning, she started out with a strikeout. Yeah, three pitch strikeout as well. As now Juhas up to bat. She had a couple of those fielding plays in the last inning. 200 average with three RBIs on the year. Uh, her dad, Mark, played football at Tulane. And that, and that hit her. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, but She's on base, that did, did hit her. Just a very small touch, but it did hit her. And she will take her base. So the Bobcats get a base runner here in the bottom of the third, trying to bounce back. They went down early in this one, but they were able to bounce right back. Yeah. And we're back to the top of the order for the Bobcats. It's Allie England, who flied out earlier in this one. As there's a ground ball to second base, and instead of going for the second base, they just got the easy out at first over there for Lucy Cronin. Uh, it's not going to really show up anywhere, but that was a great job by Juhas to not run into it out there. Yes. Uh, it was, if if the ball hits you on the base path, this is great. You're immediately out, because, it, and it was really close to that happening there. It she happened, had to jump a little bit over there. in the Yankees-Orioles game. Uh, it hit Anthony Rizzo, got hit with a baseball on a ground ball by Giancarlo Stanton. So, yeah, let's stop talking about the Yankees because I will just get mad. <laughs> um, Yasmin Logan up to bat. Um, but, no, as you were saying, it is a good piece of base running because if you do get hit with the ball off of it, you are out. Yeah. So, you know, smart to just avoid the ball, uh, let the play happen, and was able to get to second. So the Bobcats with a runner in scoring position here with two outs. As once again, 
But Caitlin Bean jumps ahead in a count. 0 oh and 2 here to Yasmin Logan with a 304 average. Um, Logan fouled to out to third base the first time up. Trying to add to her ribby count, which is currently sitting at 11, the Pittsburgh native. The 0 oh 2 here from Bean is high. 1 and 2. Bobcats have done a good job in this game of fighting back from 0-2. We've seen it a few times where they're able to just get a count back to somewhere where you know you can start to see some pitches from uh, from a pitcher where you know it happens. There's that one is just fouled off, just got the back edge of that bat, so Logan stays alive. Yeah, I mean it. They've done the Bobcat after the first inning. The Bobcats have done a really good job of making Bean work. She goes to the rosin bag there. I mean, it, it, it's it been a lot harder for her. It's not the first inning. She only had to make six pitches. I mean, the rest of the inning, she's had to go a lot more. Yeah. As there is a swing and a miss. Third strikeout of the game for Caitlin Bean. The Bobcats strand a runner on second, and they get nothing out of the bottom of the third. We'll be right back with the top of the fourth inning from Ohio softball field. Let's go Cats. Let's go Labatt Blue Light. When you drink a pristine Canadian Pilsner, you're good at beer. Bobcats fans, grab a Labatt Blue Light and be good at beer. Always enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2021 Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. All rights reserved. Labatt, registered U.S. trademark of Labatt Brewing Company, LTD. We've all seen the tragedies associated with drug activity and impaired driving in our state. This is Trooper Conkler of the High State Highway Patrol's Athens Post. We need everyone's help to keep drugs out of our communities, keep impaired drivers off our roads, and get people to make good decisions when driving. Traffic and community safety is the responsibility of everyone. You can do your part in calling pound 677 to report drug activity and impaired or reckless drivers to law enforcement. Together we can make Ohio a safer place to live and travel. Welcome back to Athens, Ohio, beautiful Athens, Ohio, as we've got a great softball game on our hands once again today between two of the class of the MAC, it's the Central Michigan Chippewas visiting the Ohio Bobcats. And now up to bat for the Chippewas is Caitlin Britton, number 13. Uh, she had a home run in yesterday's loss. That was a two solo shots. That was a good curveball by Cole there, just was it, it looked like it was going to go inside, and just at the last minute, it just turned a little bit, caught the inside corner of the plate. Beautiful pitch. Britton wasn't even thinking about swinging, and it ended up in the zone. As that one is fouled back, so very quickly, 0-2 for Caitlin Britton. Yeah, about the same pitch there, and Britton this time able to recognize it and try to get the hands back to swing at it, but just a bit too uh, early on that. Cole, Cole's really adjusted since that meeting with uh, Kenzie Roark and Rice after the second inning. That one's just a bit outside. One and two. Cole doesn't have a strikeout yet. But so far, only one run of damage, two hits for the Chippewas. Yeah, it, it what really wasn't like there was much traffic either. I mean, the run was just a home run by uh, Alexander for Central Michigan. Fouled back. And count remains one and two for Britton. Yeah, Britton just a little bit late on that. Yeah, Britton does tend to strike out a lot, has 33 strikeouts. We'll see if it happens again here. One and two pitch from Cole is mashed into left field and that is gone. She got all of that one. And Central Michigan reclaims the lead. It is two to one Chippewas as Caitlin Britton takes that one two pitch almost to Court Street. Yeah. That's her eighth home run on the year. I mean, Britton, Britton, a little bit of an Otani like uh, 
numbers there. Yeah. They were not quite on the pitching side, but definitely on the hitting side. Maybe maybe more of a maybe more of a Mike Leak comparison would be a bit better. But I mean, she's got great hitting numbers and decent enough pitching numbers and hitting there, giving Central Michigan another lead. Now leading two to one. And now Kelsey Alexander, who homered in the top of the second, is back up to the plate, and the first pitch is taken low. So a ball, 1-0, and oh, and Central Michigan now with an immediate response. They retake the lead. Yeah, bo both, the, both the home runs have been leadoff home runs. Mm -hmm. Cole, Cole's had a little bit of a tr problem with. Uh, As in that one was inside. Cole's had a little oh. bit of a problem uh, getting reacclimated now after that. And, and Roark's going to come out and visit her. Visit. Yep. Just so tell her to. Calm down, you know, it's all right. I mean, it wasn't that – it. the home run, it, it, it was only like 10, 15 feet over the fence. I mean, it's not – Britain it, just – she's got that power. She does. You know, I mean – that, That's how he generates, you know, gets, gets it over the fence. That happens. I mean, home runs like that happen. I mean, the important thing for it, nobody else was on base, you know, obviously being a leadoff, but, I mean, if you have – a few people on base, you get worried about it, you know, if you're struggling more than that. But those have been the only blemishes today for Cole, have just been those solo shot home runs. So, I mean, don't don't worry too much about just having solo shot home runs. Just keep pitching to people. If they can, if they get it, they get it. But trust your offense will be able to get good enough. And obviously, you don't want to throw too many of them. But it happens. Don't get too worried about it. And she comes back out here with a strike as. Yep. Seems to calm down a little bit. Cole responds right there after the mound visit with a good strike right on the outside corner. Two and one. As Cole's trying to keep up the momentum from yesterday. That one has popped up into shallow-ish right field, but the play is made by Caitlin Fogue. So the Bobcats get the first out of the inning. And Mackenzie Cole attempts to resume business as usual. And now Bracamonte up to bat for the Chippewas. What is a Chippewa? I think, I think it's an Indian. I believe, I, believe, I believe it's a tribe of Indians that were up in uh, Michigan uh, near uh, Mount Pleasant. Where First the pitch outside ball one. Where central Michigan is from. I, I believe that that's my understanding of I, the I situation. I really don't know what a Chippewa is. That's why yeah. I was asking. You know, it's, it's always been an interesting name. Cer it's certainly the most interesting name in the MAC. Um, the MAC does have some good mascots, as the second pitch of the at bat is high ball two. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's one of the more original names out there. I mean, you always enjoy when it's not like I mean, what in the SEC they got like what four schools with Tigers? Yeah, <laughs> LSU, Auburn, Missouri. Yep. Uh, maybe it's just three, but. Still, probably too too many. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's nice to see a little bit more of uh, the creativity, creativity yeah. with it. And there's a strike from Cole, two and one. I mean, I love Bobcats. I think Bobcats yeah. is a good name. Bobcats is original. I mean, you look Red farther Hawks in the map. Yeah, Red Hawks, the Zips of Akron. Yeah. I mean, there's nowhere else. Even even like most high schools, I've never heard of a high school with the nickname Zips. So I mean. The originality of nicknames are really cool, and you see a lot of that in the Mac as that is. Flash, just foul. Just foul. was o pretty much right over third base, but it lands foul. So two and two now the count for Mackenzie Cole. Yeah, the third base umpire had to hurry and get out of the way of that one. Yeah. And Bracamonte looking to up that average of 210 right now, but you know, with nine RBIs on the year. Cole looking for a first strikeout. And it is going to be a base hit for Bracamonte. Right back over Cole's head. Pretty much right over second base and into center field. So a base hit for Bracamonte. The fourth hit of the game for Central Michigan. And another base runner on for the Chippewas. As now Lucy Cronin comes up to the plate. Looking to increase the lead for the Chippewas. Yeah, that's the first time that there's been two hits in an inning for uh, the Chippewas now. Cole hoping to uh, regain a bit of normalcy against Cronin. And that pitch is outside, ball one. 
Cronin walked the first time up and then was uh, struck down at second base on a fielder's choice. Yeah, I mean, Cole has already given up the same amount of runs yesterday through three and a third that she did in seven full innings yesterday. So maybe just a little bit of tiredness or a little bit of a, uh, ooh, that was close. Very close at first base there as Brooke Rice tossed it over to Spotchak trying to catch Emily Bracamonte sleeping. And I think Bracamonte woke up at about the last possible second and got back on base. I think if that was a little bit of a better tag there by Spotchak, she would have had her. She kind of was nonchalantly just bringing it back. And I think if she would have slammed it down, she might have had that. Swing and a miss there from Cronin. So two and one now to count. Yeah, a little bit of games going on between Rice the catcher and Bracamonte on first base just kind of juking out a little bit after the pitch is thrown. Rice thinking about throwing it over there. That's going to be just fouled off. Yeah, fouled back two and two the count now as Cole still without a strikeout in this game will try to get her first one. She had six yesterday I believe. Yep. So uh, yesterday was a sparkling outing for her. Not as perfect so far today but she has been fairly solid. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough to, you know, turn back around and pitch again after mm -hmm. what, like only like 16 hours layover. As that is smashed high deep into left field, and it was caught all the way in the corner. Runner advances, though. So a very, very long and high pop out there for Lucy Cronin. For a second, you thought it might just sneak over the fence over there right at the 200 mark. I think, if anything, it was going to sneak over sneak over the bullpen fence there. Yeah, I maybe, think the wind kind of brought that back a little bit. Yeah, uh, it was a close one there. It was Cronin. quite close, right in the corner, right on the line. Trying to hit her second homer of the year. As now it's Samantha Mills up to the plate uh, from Lance Chris High School. with a 167 average. And I think there will be a, there's going to be a pinch runner here as Tylen Knapp comes in, uh, the sophomore outfielder, to pinch run here for, uh, I believe, Bracamonte over there at second yeah. base. So just trying to bring in a little bit of extra speed potentially to score from second on a base hit. Yeah, Nap out of Mississippi. Mm. It's a little bit far away from the mitten of Michigan. As Ooh. once again, Brooke Rice just keeps runners honest. We saw this yesterday when their Central Michigan had a runner on second where Brooke Rice will just make you, you better not stray too far or or you will, uh, you will be punished. She is not afraid. As that is hit straight at Analia Paoli and she makes a great grab. Right into the glove and the Ohio Bobcats are able to limit the damage, but Mackenzie Cole does give up a home run to Kaitlyn Britton. So the Chippewas retake the lead. The Bobcats will try to respond in the bottom of the fourth right after this. Let O'Neill Hartman Insurance show you how Grange's strong value and fast claim service delivers league-leading coverage. O'Neill Hartman Insurance will find you a Grange auto policy that balances competitive rates and responsive Grange claim service. O'Neill Hartman Insurance considers Grange their go-to company for their combination of great value and outstanding claim service. Call O'Neill Hartman at 740-797-4685 or visit them online at O'NeillHartman.com. Back inside the friendly confines of Ohio's softball field. 
it is the Ohio Bobcats who trail by a score of two to one to Central Michigan Chippewas. The Chippewas were able to retake the lead in the top of the fourth with a Caitlin Britton solo home run. And the Bobcats were able to limit the damage from there. And they currently trail by a score of two to one. Only one hit so far. Caitlin Bean has been very, very good. And the Bobcats will try and generate some offense on her as the first pitch of the inning is high. Ball one as it's Megan McMenemy up to the plate for the Bobcats, who had a very good day yesterday. Didn't get anything going in her first at-bat, though. As that one is fouled back, she, in her first at-bat, she hit it pretty much straight at Shannon Stein over there at first base. That was a solid play, though. Kind of just a little backhanded grab there, and just stepping on the base. Yep, and as we've mentioned a couple times, uh, the Chippewas really pride themselves on that fielding prowess, and we've seen a few really, really good defensive plays today on both sides um, for both teams. As the, uh, the pitch here is grounded to second, should be a routine play, and it is as the throw came in from Cronin to Stein, and the first out of the inning is recorded McMenemy 0 for 2. As Analia Paoli now off to the plate. We'll Paola. try and generate some offense. Uh, Paola, Paoli's been doing this for a while. I mean, back at uh, Albert Gallatin High School, back in Pennsylvania. She was first team All-State freshman and sophomore year. Fouls back to first pitch. I mean, one that, and up, or oh and one. That, that's impressive. I mean, to be that good. She was second team All-State her junior year, and then uh, being a sophomore, obviously her senior year getting canceled due to COVID, but. I, that's impressive to me, being a freshman and a sophomore and getting first team All-State honors is very impressive and just shows how good of a player she is. Yeah, very, very talented player. One of the best hitters in this in this team. She was probably one of the few hitters that didn't really get much going yesterday. Um, we'll see if she can buck the trend today. As Paoli, one and one count pitch from Bean is swung on, it is popped into right field and foul. None of the Chippewa defenders could get over there to catch that one. So Paoli will get another shot, one I think and that, two. I think that was helped by the wind a little bit. Paoli was helped by the wind a little bit there. Kept, that ball just kept carrying as the wind took it. And yeah. uh, three, just three Chippewas over there trying to make the play. I think first and second baseman and the right fielder are all getting over there, but nobody was able to cover enough ground in time. But one and two count now for Analia Paoli against Caitlin Bean. Bean's pitch is outside. Ball two, two and two the count. One out here in the bottom of the fourth. If you're joining us a little bit late, uh, it's been a little bit of a low scoring game, a defensive game. Caitlin Bean has been very, very good on the mound for the Chippewas. Uh, the teams had traded solo home runs in the bottom of the second as that pitch is hit hard out into center. Tolmy is under it and she makes the play. The teams traded solo home runs in the second inning. Kelsey Alexander hit one for the Chippewas. That was a, and I think it was a double by Bernard. No, and then they she did went not. Back they around. did not. They did not solo home run. Excuse me. Bernard hit a double, then advanced to third on a wild pitch, and then Spacek with an RBI sacrifice fly into center was able to bring the Bobcats home. And then in the top of the fourth, it was Caitlin Britton who was able to homer and retake the lead as the Bobcats now two outs quickly in the bottom of the fourth here. Bernard's looking at the at the plate, looking to get her second hit of the day and the Bobcats second hit as well. Yeah, the only hit so far. As this one is gonna be a tough play and it is another base hit for Sophia Bernard. She just squeaks it past the third, third baseman Bracamonte over there. And Bernard is two for two, continuing her hot streak at the plate. Yeah, going back, going back so far in the series. She's a four for five. Yeah. And she was she hit the home run yesterday to keep the Bob to put the Bobcats in the lead early in that one. A lead that they would never relinquish. And now Caroline Spotcheck is up again to potentially try and, you know, as the Bobcats did yesterday, get a little bit of a two out rally going as this one is fouled back um, into the netting. 0 oh, and 1. Spacek had a had a pretty good slap of the ball 
out to deep center field her first time up, caught out there by Tomey, but still drove in a run with it. And if she makes good contact like that again, especially with the wind picking up, maybe it'll just get a little bit over the fence. Well, that pitch was low, one and one. Two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Ohio trying to respond. Only two hits on this game so far for them, both of them by the girl who just got one, Sophia Bernard. And now Caroline Spacek will try and drive in her second RBI of the game. The pitch is swung on and Oof. fouled. Um, <laughs> pretty much straight past Kenzie Roark over there at third base. Almost got, almost got her legs there. Yeah. And yeah, it was um, a rocket on the ground, but just a little bit early there for Spacek. One and two, the count. Caitlin Fogue is waiting on deck in case Spacek is able to generate something. The one and two here from B. Fouled back by Spacek. Just a, just a slight tip. Yeah, but slight tip. To stay alive. Looked like it kind of glanced a little bit off of the catcher's mask there of uh, Mills behind the plate, but unable to grab it to complete the out. So Spacek will be able to survive for another one and make Bean have another pitch. The pitch from Bean. Good take there from Spacek. Thought about swinging at it, was able to hold the swing back. Two and two, that pitch was high. We've got twos on the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Two runs for Central Michigan to the one for the Bobcats. Trying to get something going here with a two-out rally in the bottom of the fourth. That is low, and the count is full. Yeah, spot check worked it to a full count the first time, too. She also got behind early in the count last time and worked it full. Again, Spacek's done a good job of battling Bean, and once again, Bean's having to make a lot of pitches here to try to get Spacek out. And this is a big spot, you get the feeling. Spacek swings on it, and it is popped up in very tough spot, and the play is made. Lucy Cronin came over from second base and just kind of reached over her teammate and made the grab. It was a tough play, but the Chippewas get out of the bottom of the fourth, and they keep the lead as they head to the plate. We'll be back for the fifth in a minute. You expect world-class primary care from Memorial Health System. It's time to expect more, much more. Our patients now also get free virtual urgent care. So expect our expertise everywhere and answers anytime for free. No one else offers this because we're reinventing primary care. So find out more and expect more today from Memorial Health System. The past year and a half, we've all been part of unprecedented times that have been heavy. At Integrated Services for Behavioral Health, we have been here for you throughout the heaviness of the pandemic and will continue to be here for you whenever you need us. Checking in on your behavioral health and well-being is more important than ever. If you feel like you can benefit from home or community-based support, counseling, peer recovery support, and a myriad of other services we offer, please call us at 800-321-8293. We're here for you. Welcome back to the fifth inning here at Ohio Softball Field. The score is currently 2-2-1 in favor of the Chippewas, who are in their pinstripes today uh, with Chippewas emblazoned on the front. And they're at the top of the order here for the third time. Shannon Stein up to bat, um, all the way from Albuquerque, New, Albuquerque, New Mexico. She led the team in RBIs last year, and she takes a ball to start the inning, one and up. Yeah, bo both of her at-bats so far today have looked pretty much about the same. Both of them fly outs in shallow left field to the Bobcats shortstop, Megan McEmmy. So we'll see if she can not, well, she's gonna and pop it a up. Pop up. And it's foul, but it is caught by Spacek, so Stein 0 for 3 with three flyouts. 
Yeah, well, this one it's uh, this one's three instead of six, so You're somewhere a little bit different <laughs> this time. <laughs> yep. And now Abby Tolmy is up. She's made her made her presence felt on the field so far. Um, she had a big big play in center to pretty much save a double earlier in this game. As a quick stoppage from the umpire, and now we are back. As told me, one of the better players on this Central Michigan team on both sides of the baseball. She reached. Uh, she reached on base in the first inning through a walk. Yeah, and there's a hit, flared out, but oh, foul. Oh, look out, dog! Almost hit a <laughs> golden retriever down there. Uh, out of play down the third base line. Yeah, and now with one out. Mackenzie Cole will try and regain that rhythm that she had for so long yesterday. As her pitch is right down Main Street. That's a strike. Nice off-speed pitch there. I don't think Tommy was thinking that pitch would be anything and it just was able to make it right there in the zone. So 0-2 the count here for Tommy Cole. Still no strikeouts in the top of the fifth inning. As that was kind of like a half check swing from Tolmy. Got contact though and just fouled it past third base. Yeah, that ball Stay was high. high. That ball was a little bit high and Tolmy kind of realized that a little bit late. Uh, still was able to get contact on the ball, just was a bit early and it went down the third base line foul. Count remains 0 and 2 with one out here in the top of the fifth. The score remains 2 to 1 Central Michigan as that is swung on, and McMenemy just couldn't quite pick it up with her first try, and that will be a base Well, let's for see. Told me we're kind of waiting on how they score. Yeah, and they're going to score it in air, yep. It's an error on McMenemy. I mean, that was a, it's a tough play. So it's a very tough play. It got by Paoli play, But she did third. bobble it a little bit. I guess that's where they're saying it'll be an error, so. Yeah, half a bobble, so no hit for Tolmy. It'll be an error. And now Valamont up with one out here. And the first error of the game for either team. As Valamont swings on the first pitch, and it just ekes past third base on the wrong side of the foul line. Yeah, again. She's been, Valamont has had a lot of really early pitches there where she's seen the pitch and she swung at it, but it's been, <coughs> Excuse me. It's been early, and so it'll just go down the right field line foul. Uh, Valmont, the righty in the box, fouls it off again quickly. 0 and 2. Yeah, that that one she waited on a little bit more. It was a little bit of a faster pitch there by Cole, and by the time Valmont swung at it, it was a little late, and it got fouled off the other way. So 0 to the count. It's been a low scoring game, a, not a ton of offense from either team. Um, and that's why it remains in the balance. Still 2 to 1 as Cole's pitch is swung on, popped up, and caught over there at second base by Lauren Uhas. So the Bobcats get the second out of the inning. It was a little bit of an awkward play for Uhas, so way to charge onto it and make the in the end the simple catch, but now. They've got to contend with the next batter up to the plate, Skyler which is Coberly. Skyler Coberly. She's got Ooh. one of Central Michigan's four hits of the day. Yeah, was, had a single on, in her last at-bat. So what can Mackenzie Cole conjure up here? And that's a good pitch. <laughs> Coberly just didn't quite swing, but it was right down in the strike zone. It looked like it was going to drop a little bit farther than what it did. And Coberly was sitting there like, no, I don't quite want to swing at that. It's going to drop below the strike zone, but it was right there at the knees. Beautiful pitch there by Cole. And once again, Rice just making sure. Uh, Abby told me he doesn't go anywhere she shouldn't. Um, just keeping the base runner honest over there at first base. And once again, she was safe. Two outs here for Coberly. One and one the count. Cole deals outside, ball two. Well, 
And Mackenzie Cole, it's been not maybe not quite as sparkling as yesterday, but she's she's been pretty solid. You know, the same sort of problems that she had yesterday and giving up some home runs. But oh. and there's her first strikeout of the day. And that wasn't, I think the umpire jumped the gun there. That was a strike three. <laughs> that was strike two. Oh, yeah, you know, no. It was this very spirited punch out. Coberly looked back a little confused, like, hang on a minute. I'm not done yet. And um, yeah, that'll, that'll spark a little bit of confusion here as now Coberly goes over to her coach <laughs> at third base. I got I to gotta be honest. I used to do a little bit of softball umpiring in uh, – just around my town, just a little bit of a summer job with just, you know, the 12U leagues and stuff. I've, done, I've made that mistake before. I get a little bit too excited, jump the gun a little bit. Yeah, sometimes if just, you know, you just forget the count. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you get excited. It's a be I mean, that was a beautiful pitch, it and you get a, a bit pitch. excited. But uh, Now we'll see if she can get the real punch out here. Let's count two and two, swung on, foul. Got to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen it in a uh, – I've never seen it in a college softball game. Well, no, I'm trying to think of it. I mean, there might have been one or two times it's happened in the uh, major leagues, but for baseball, but I can't think of any time I've seen it on the college softball field. Yeah, and it remains all twos on the scoreboard. Two runs for Central Michigan, two to the count, two outs in the top of the fifth, and this is softly hit over to McMenemy, who makes up for her error and gets the out at first. So the Bobcats strand a runner at first base and get the Chippewas out in the top of the fifth, and they'll try to get the tying run here in the bottom of the fifth inning. We'll be right back. Whether you're coming to Athens to root on the Bobcats, visiting friends and family, or just in town for business, the Hampton Inn in Athens wants to be your home away from home. With 86 sparkling rooms, complimentary high-speed internet, hot breakfast served each morning, and a spa and business center, you can expect a great night's stay with service that will bring you back. Visit us on the web at HamptonInn.com. That's HamptonInn.com. And go Bobcats! If you're traveling to a game, a weekend road trip, or just around town, you need to stop at GoMart. You'll find a GoMart open 24 hours a day right off the interstate or right off Main Street in your local community. You can refuel your ride with quality gasoline and also yourself with popular snacks, drinks, and more. We're making it easy to keep up with your busy schedule by keeping you on the go. GoMart is the proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat football. Go for good times. Welcome back, and we are just about set to get the bottom of the fifth underway here with Caitlin Fogue for the Bobcats leading off. Caitlin Beads put together a nice little outing here for the Central Michigan Chippewas. She currently only one earned run, two hits, and the Bobcats have struggled to generate much of anything against her so far. Yeah, the one, one thing the Bobcats have done decently well is they've only struck out three times. And they've made her work, especially in the last few innings. Fogue that flares one out into shallow. Ooh. And it's caught in the end. It was into sh kind of shallow-ish right field. And there was a little bit of a collision over there between Valamont and Tolmy. It was Valamont who ended up making that catch. An awkward play once again, but you could just see how well drilled Central Michigan are in the field. Yeah, I mean, it was a good job actually by Tolmy. Once they got there, it could have been a much worse collision, but... Tomi kind of got there once she realized if Valamont was there and going to get the ball. She kind of just curled up in a ball underneath it to where it was away from the legs, and she kind of tripped over her a little bit, Valamont did, but nothing enough to drop the ball or anything, and they get the out. Yeah, so now it's Brooke Rice up to the plate, the number eight hitter. She struck out on her last time at the plate. So quickly behind after that swing and miss, 0 and 1. And she takes ball one. Yeah, that, just, that just dropped a little bit there. I mean, it was close. It was close, but it dropped right below the strike zone. Yeah, Kayla Bean has had put together a really, really nice outing here. 
But this game is still hanging in the balance as there's another big cut and miss. Oh, and two. It was the same sort of thing that happened yesterday. The Bobcats were always just, you know, if they felt like they were in control as Mackenzie Cole pitched her gem. But, you know, yesterday it took that big bottom of the sixth until, you know, the game really felt like it was out of reach. And the same sort of thing happens here. It's just a one-run game as Bean deals outside two and two. Being in the bottom of the fifth, you really, I mean, a game one of this doubleheader, you really want to take this series. Uh, whether you take it in game one or game two, I mean, it's really important, especially with Bowling Green right behind you, also vying for second place in the MAC. As there is the second strikeout in a row for Brooke Rice, fourth of the game for Caitlin Bean. As now Juhas is up with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Juhas walked or, or, excuse me, hit by pitch the first time up. Yeah, the Valcats have only gone through the order twice and we're in the fifth inning. So you can just see how well, how efficient um, Caitlin Bean has been with just getting this line about. As there's another swing and a miss. She's dealing today as Juhas quickly behind 0-1. I think the most impressive thing for uh, Juhas has been no walks. Not one single walk. The only the only person who hasn't earned a trip on base was Juhas with that hit by pitch in the third inning. So that's strike two there. And she's got three RBIs on the season. Two home runs on the year. The Bobcats could use one here. Yeah the freshman uh, second baseman. As that one is outside, one and two the count as the Bobcats are just struggling right now to get anything on Caitlin Bean. It was a different story yesterday. They were able to get generate plenty of offense on Grace Leto, but today Bean has had their number. And obviously still plenty of softball left to be played, but so far Bean's pitching a gem. As there's another strikeout, her second in a row, and her fifth on the game, and through five, she has shut down this Bobcat offense as they will head back out for the top of the sixth. We'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Jared Dean with Dean Heating and Cooling. As your local Tempstar dealer, you can experience superior home comfort with Tempstar game-changing technology. Whether you need a fall tune-up or a midwinter repair call, our expert technicians will make sure your heating system is running at peak performance. Count on Dean Heating and Cooling and Tempstar to keep you cozy all winter long. Find us online at deanheatingandcooling.com and go Cats! Voice of the Bobcats, Russ Eisenstein, on behalf of David White Services, the largest heating and cooling dealer in Southeast Ohio. They've been the choice of thousands for over 45 years. Offering the most efficient Lennox heat pumps, air conditioners, and furnaces, David White Services can save you money on your heating and cooling bills. Thanks, Russ. I'm David White. And I'm Esther White Thomas, inviting you to call us today to schedule a free estimate for heating and cooling or a new gas fireplace. David White Services is a proud sponsor of Ohio Bobcat Athletics. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play? Top of the sixth here at OSF as the Ohio Bobcats are taking on the Central Michigan Chippewas in game one of this doubleheader today, this beautiful Saturday in Athens, as Mackenzie Cole deals a strike on her first pitch of the sixth. She's She's been pretty good today as well. I think it's getting kind of overshadowed by just how good Caitlin Bean has been on the other side for Central Michigan. But, you know, just the two solo home runs. One of which done by the player at the plate, Caitlin Britton is woo. And her last in her last at bat, but she's quickly behind 0 and 2 here. As yeah, she got all of that last one. Um that the home. go ahead home run in the top of the fourth. Yeah, just sent it out in the left center field off the shed out there. 
We'll see if she can do it again or if Cole will win this edition. Still no strikeouts for Cole as that is just Ooh. outside. I think that was a good call by the umpire. It was close, but it looked like it was just a little bit outside on the chalk. I think he's, he's been pretty consistent on that outside corner. Though, I think so. Spacek thought that was a strike three. One and two now, and that was low. Bounced well before the plate. And two and two now, the count. Yeah, Central Michigan's dugout. Getting pretty rowdy in there. I think they've been like that they, the yeah, entire they game. They've, they've it happened yesterday, too. Even when they, they, they were down 7-1, they hit a home run in that bottom of the the seventh, and they all came out, you know, all excited. As Jack Swing. No. No. A very hesitant no. Really, and that's about the slowest I've ever seen that a no dramatic. call. It was very dramatic. He's sitting there. <laughs> Looking like the gates of a railroad crossing, just sometimes. Slowly, sometimes I, slowly. I just think the umpires enjoy the drama. I think they just enjoy, <laughs> they just enjoy the spectacle. Oh, now the count yeah. is full here for Caitlin Bean, who's worked it back from 0-2. Cole now, the payoff is high and Ooh. away, and a, a really good walk worked there by Caitlin Britton, and base runner on here in the, the top of the sixth. Third walk of the day for uh, Cole. Now we are back to the other girl who hit a home run earlier in this one, and that's Kelsey Alexander. She homered in the top of the second from the leadoff spot in that inning. Flew out to right fielder, second at bat though. So we'll see if Cole can mitigate the runner on first and maybe even get a double play as he'll bunt. Bunt miss, Brooke Rice with a just a, a pump fake to just psych out Britain over there. She Didn't wanted him it. to dirty those pinstripes a little bit, <laughs> slide a little bit, and uh, keep her honest. Yeah, keep her honest. As Cole now, one and O oh, the count. And that's the thing with these Bobcat pitchers is that they just don't have a lot. They really, you know, only really roll with from Mackenzie Cole and Kylie Kofelt, who we'll probably see later today. Yeah. Um, there's just not a lot much else in terms of pitching depth. No, it's probably no. their, their biggest weakness in this team. As Cole, 2-0 is a strike, and Rice throws over to spot check. Nothing doing over there, and Cole gets her first strike of the at-bat, 2-1. and one. Well, Just some cloud cover rolling in here, as it's a little bit, definitely a little bit chillier today than it was yesterday. Right, hovering right around 60 right now with the wind, definitely a little bit chillier. Bunch shown here again from Alexander, but it's foul. And the count will go to two and two. Yeah, that'll end any more thoughts about bunning. I mean, I know softball is a little bit different than baseball, but I've never really been a big fan of bunning. I mean, it has a little bit more of a place in softball since there's such little room in between the bases. I mean, it's, it's much easier to get it done, but and you have a lot of slap hitters, especially, who bat lefty, but I've, I've never been a big fan of bunting. Yeah. Cole swung on. It's past the glove of Cole, and that'll be a base hit for Kelsey Alexander. Now Central Michigan put together a little bit of a rally here in the top of the sixth inning. Fifth hit of the day for the Chippewas. Eighth base runner. Yeah, looking like there's a little bit of activity down in the Ohio bullpen. Can't quite tell who that is, but. Now up the bat is Bracamonte. She shows bunt, and this bunt will dribble foul. Just foul. Yeah, it was a good attempt. It was. I mean, I think I think if that would have stayed fair, she would have had herself a little bunt hit there. Yeah, I think we would have had the bases loaded with nobody out, which would have been real trouble for the Bobcats. As they try to work out of this jam with no outs currently in this inning, first and second, with nobody else out. Bracamonte here in a big spot, the 2-10 hitter, as she fouls that one off, 0-2 the count. 
And Cole's just struggled to get the third strike today. Yeah. She's had plenty of O2s, plenty of opportunities for that strikeout, but she just hasn't been, she hasn't had that final blow, so to speak. And still, five innings through for her, she's got nothing in terms of the strikeout department. Bracamonte hoping to get her second straight hit. And, and she through. will. Here comes Britton home. The throw is not in time, but the throw over to second is in time. And it could be a double play here at the plate. No. It's not. Two runs score for Central Michigan. As that was a crazy play all over. As the throw came in, it was definitely not in time to get Britton at home. The great throw from Rice to the to Juhas at second to get one out. But then the runner did come home and it was it was a really close call. The umpire said it was safe. I, I think that was a good call. It was really close. The, fir the first one, the first one was clear because it wasn't even close. The second one at second base uh, was also pretty clear. She got beat by two steps. But the last one at home plate, I I think that was a good call. It looked like she got there about a half a step sooner than what the ball did. So, yeah. And now there might be some sort of a substitution going on here. We'll see. But now the lead is extended to 4-1 to one now for Central Michigan. That's just one RBI. I'm trying to figure out how to score that. I mean, there's not really very many things where you got a uh, – what a nine. I think we're gonna have a pit, pitch hitter, pinch hitter here. Yeah, it's gonna be number 14. That'll be Tessa Nuss, a redshirt sophomore out of Lake Orion, Michigan. Yeah, just one hit on the year so far. Um, we'll see what she could generate here. As Mackenzie Cole, you know, that's the biggest difference so far in this game is that Central Michigan's just taking advantage of their opportunities, including that one. Bases are cleared now after that crazy play as the first pitch of that at-bat is high, 1-0. and oh. I think they might be maybe looking for a little bit of a slap hit here to keep the inning going. Cole deals low and away, 2-0. Yeah, if you see Nuss kind of sitting there, kind of edging a little bit forward in the batter's box there, that looks what, what they're trying to do. If she gets a good enough pitch for it, she's going to try to yeah, slap it. Some of those softball first. hitters, they kind of do that. It's like almost kind of like a run-up almost. They just kind of take that little half step. Well, what it is is you kind of run up and you try to bunt it and then run to first, especially if you're left-handed. Yeah, that's That'll a good a pitch from Cole. Strike one. If As you Cole saw it there, it's a little yeah. bit of a bunch showing. Cole wants to kind of keep it on the outside of the plate because that makes it a little bit harder to get the slap hit down. But if you can get, I mean, it's almost like a swinging bun is what they do. But, I mean, it's much easier if you get it on the inside of the plate because then you can kind of just turn it around. Outside, just about. Three and one now. The count as Cole trying to work her way through this inning, which has been a struggle. They've already given up two runs as Central Michigan scored in only the even innings so far. One in the second, one in the fourth, and now two runs here in the top of the sixth for a 4-1 lead. That one is swung on softly to second. The throw is in time, and the Bobcats have the second out of the inning. So Cole gets that second out that they needed. And now the Bobcats will try and keep it moving here as Samantha Mills is now back up to the plate. Eight RBIs on the year for her with a 167 average. We'll see what she can do here against Cole. Cole deals, swing and a miss, strike one. Mills has a lot of strikeouts on the year. Actually has more strikeouts than I believe hits. Uh, she's only got 14 hits on the year and to 17 strikeouts. Cole's pitch is fouled over into Bob Wren Stadium. That would have been a 
would have probably been a double at the warning track over in Bob Wren. Unfortunately, that's uh, a little bit left of us. It's uh, not quite straight enough hitting to where it'll land out in fair play here at uh, OSF. And now the 0-2 is outside. Cole still searching for that first strikeout. She thought she had one, but the umpire jumped the gun. Um, we'll see what she could get here with two outs, one and two the count here. Cole trying to work her way through the inning, and the Bobcats fighting from behind here big time. As this one is fouled back and into the stands at OSF. Yeah. Just kind of a little bit of a jam shot there. A little bit early for uh, Mills on that. One, two pitch. Swung on, over to Unas at second, and she just couldn't make the play. That's E4. It was, it was an awkward one to make, and I do think that will be an error. It is. And Unas picks up Ohio's second error of the game, and Central Michigan with two outs. Get another base runner, and this has been a plentiful inning for them, and they keep it going as now Stein will come back up to the plate for her first fourth at bat of the game. You definitely want to get Stein out. You don't want to see Tommy in this situation. You, you don't want, want to, to see out Stein the here. Stein has 12 home runs. And this this could be bad. It could go from bad to worse for the Bobcats here as Cole deals low, 1-0. Stein with 29 RBIs on the year as well. So, and obviously you don't want to see either of them to be honest. <laughs> no. You don't want to face the top of that order is very powerful. As that is high and away. Two and oh the count now. Almost looks like Cole's kind of kind of pitching around her a little bit, pitching around Stein a little bit, understanding uh, the situation a bit, being a little bit careful, making sure that she's not given any easy pitches that Stein can mash out of here. Cole steadying herself. Now here comes the 2-0, and it's fouled back, 2-1. Of you know, with Tolmy on deck, Valamont behind her. Not the part of this lineup you want to face with runners in position. Stein takes inside, 3-1, and one. another close one on the plate, and yeah. now a walk here could bring up Abby Tolme with runners in scoring position, which is not something you want to see. Yeah, Cole kind of trying to calm herself down. She, like a lot of the crowd here, thought that last pitch was a strike, and that is way no, high, and No doubt about that one, and that is a walk, and now a runner in scoring position here for Tolme. Or actually, yes, it will be Tolme. As I think there I might think, be I think, I think, a pinch runner yeah. here potentially. Yeah, there is it going to be a pinch runner here. For the lead runner, it's going to uh, be Mills Stephanie some, Anderson coming into the game. It's going to be a courtesy runner since it's for the catcher. So. Yeah, so Anderson will come in to pinch run. She was an academic All Mac last year. She is in at second. Stein will remain on first and Tolme now trying to extend the Central Michigan lead. It is currently sitting at four to one Chippewas here in the top of the sixth. It's been a good top of the sixth for Central Michigan. They got two runs on one play um, a few minutes ago. And now Tolme trying to extend it further as there's a good pitch from Cole in for a strike, 0 and 1. Judging by how much Anderson's leading off a of second base, I, I think anything to the, I think a, a base hit to the outfield here will score Anderson. Yeah, with two outs, you'll see the the quick run off the plate. As oh, she got caught too here. far. Off. Oh, Ooh, that was close. Anderson 
Playing with fire there as she just led a little bit too far off the base. Juhas was there. It's a good on the money throw by Rice. Just Anderson able to get back there just in time. Yeah, Rice has had a few of those over the past couple days. One of these times I think it'll happen. Tolmy now takes outside two and one the count. And a big spot here in this game. Bobcats, if they let this get much farther away, it'll fall out of reach. Yeah. Already had, this is a seventh batter already up in this inning. Two outs for Tolmy. The pitch swung on. It's going to be a tough play, and McMenemy can't make the play. It's kicked. This could be a, uh, we'll see what the call is here, if it's going to be E6 or if it'll go down as a hit. It would be Ohio's third error, their second of the inning, if it's called. It'd be the second on, is. actually the second straight error uh, on, uh, second straight error on Mechamy that. Uh, it looks uh, like we're, there's going to be some sort of a change here. We'll see what yeah. happens. I think Kenzie Rourke is coming out. She did go over to the umpire. And now the bases are loaded for Valamont here to potentially drive in multiple runs. 355 hitter with 10 RBIs. And she showed up in some big spots. And we'll see what it is here, but I just think the big, the big number on the board right now is just that error number. Because we yeah. saw some sparkling plays from Central Michigan in the field earlier in this game to potentially save some runs. And now Ohio's making some some bad mistakes in the field and it's yeah. costing them right here. And it could yet cost them further as McKaylee Valamont is gonna look to punish the Bobcats here. As Cole I mean, This whole this whole this whole rally here, because there was nobody on two outs and it started with an E four. Yeah, you're right. And there's a strike from Cole. Oh, and one. Cole deals. Another two quick strikes on Valamont. Oh, and two now the count, so the runners will be moving. Be a beautiful spot here for Cole to get her first strike out of the day. Yeah, to keep this game afloat. It's 4-1. Any more runs in the Bobcats might feel like it's too far away. With just two hits on the day so far, as that That's one is fouled back and behind us. And Mackenzie Cole obviously pitched yesterday. Pitched very well yesterday. Only gave up two runs, six hits. Um, she's given up the same amount of hits today. Two more runs on top of that. Um... Hasn't been a bad outing by any by any stretch of the word, but she hasn't got any help from her offense today. Cole deals, and she gets a big time to get that first strikeout. Cole steps up, gets the strikeout to keep the Bobcats in the game with the bases loaded, and the Chippewas strand three. We'll be right back as the Bobcats try to fight back down four to one. Okay, people, we all know what's at stake in this game. Zoe, what's at stake? Our futures. Our futures. And is anything going to keep us from achieving our goal? No way. Because what do we have? The plan. Ohio's 529 plan. Because in this family, how do we play the college savings game? Tax free. And where do we play it? Um, I don't know, Daddy. That's okay, Pumpkin. Want to win at college savings? Go to collegeadvantage.com slash bobcats. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Welcome back to OSF, and it has been a good one here in game two of this three-game set 
between the Ohio Bobcats and the Central Michigan Chippewas. And the Bobcats currently trail by a score of four to one, and they have been shut down by Caitlin Bean, who is back out here for the bottom of the sixth. And she'll face the top of this Bobcat order. It'll be Allie Englund here to start the inning. And she swings on the first pitch, and another great play over there. First base by Shannon Stein. So a quick out for Bean, who's currently through five and a third, and she's barely put a foot wrong. Yeah, that ends her a little bit of a strikeout streak. She had two straight strikeouts coming into the inning, but uh, I mean, especially after after that big Central Michigan inning, the last half inning, you're sitting in there a bit. It's always good to get that first out. Yeah, and there it was on the first pitch of the at bat. That's outside for Yasmin Logan. Struck out her last time up in the third inning. We'll see what she could do here. One and oh the count for Bean with one out here in the bottom of the sixth. That one checked high. Two and oh the count. Yeah, Bobcats first, need to generate some offense. The first time Logan's been ahead in the count all day, both times she uh, was behind one two on and both of her previous at bats today, both resulting in outs. Hopefully that's a good sign for her. And she's quickly ahead in the count, 3-0. and oh. If she can generate a walk, it'll be exactly what the Bobcats need to just get back into this one. They've just not been able to get anything going. Um, barely, you know, I think how many walks has uh, been issued? Man, None. I, yeah, no walks, just two hits. As there's a strike, as the count now 3-1. and one. Bean has been brilliant today. And, you know, it was really just the... The one inning, you know, she gives gives up the double to uh, Bernard, who has both of the Bobcats hits, and gave up the double, and then the spot check sacrifice flies. There's a hit. It's over to the shortstop, and the throw over to first is in time. So Logan falls on the ground out to the shortstop, Coberly, and now McManamy will look to try and make up for that error in the bottom or the top of the inning, apologies. Which, in the end, did not cost the Bobcats. But we'll see if she can conjure up some offense here. The Bobcats have just been shut down offensively here by Caitlin Bean and some really good defensive plays as well. As this one is fouled back over the netting on the left side. I mean, we've seen some well-hit balls from the Bobcats. It's not like they haven't been able to get contact. Yeah. It's just some, been some great defensive plays in the field from the Chippewas, and they just haven't, they, you know, they haven't gotten that little stroke of luck or that little, you know, the bounce that they might need. As this one is driven high into right field, and it is gone. <laughs> Megan McMenemy does make up for the error in the top of the inning, and she gets a run back for the Bobcats. Their third hit of the day, their second run of the day, and it is four to two Central Michigan, and the Bobcats are back in it. Yeah, that's a huge momentum swing for them, as almost immediately as soon as that ball left the ballpark, uh, the Central Michigan infield running in and trying to calm down Bean a bit. Yeah, probably the first thing Bean's put wrong in a few innings. Yeah. And then now Paoli up, uh, the 380 hitter will look to try and generate something. She's had a little bit of a cold streak at the plate in this series. We'll see if she can do something here. As now maybe potentially a little rattled is Caitlin Bean, as that one is fouled off towards the Central Michigan bullpen. There was a contingency of uh, Central Michigan fans over on the hill there that eh, didn't really put too much effort to try to go catch that ball right over their heads. But uh. Uh, Paoli here trying to just get something going as this one again is fouled back this time over the stands Ooh. at OSF. And it is 0 and 2 with two outs. And now the Bobcats will feel as if they have a shot. You know, they, they needed to get something back. They needed to get something on Bean because they haven't been able to get anything on her since that lone run that they had in the bottom of the second. She had pitched three pretty much immaculate innings since then. And 
two thirds of another immaculate inning until McMenemy launched that one to right center. And that one is outside one and two. As Paoli will try to keep the two out rally going. You know, yesterday it was that big two out rally that they had in the bottom of this inning, the bottom of the sixth that pretty much won the Bobcats that game. Can they replicate that just on the opposite side of the spectrum? Can they get back into a game? As Paoli swings on this one and it just wasn't hit hard enough straight at Coberly who was able to make the play. So the Bobcats get a run, but still trail by two. It's 4-2 Central Michigan. We'll be back with the seventh after this. Together is a wonderful place to be. That's why CareSource is devoted to keeping you and your family healthy and happy. We promise you not only reliable health care, but also a helping hand with whatever your family needs to succeed. It's why more moms in Ohio choose CareSource for Medicaid than all other plans combined. Things only get better when we work together. And together, there's nothing we can't do. We are one. Learn more at CareSource.com. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to Wild Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Bush Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome back for the seventh inning here at Ohio Softball Field in Athens, Ohio, right in the shadow of the Convocation Center here in Athens. It has been a good softball game, and Central Michigan leads it four to two. Six hits and no errors on the game for them. The Bobcats with two runs, three hits, and the big number for them, three errors. As this Ooh. one right back at Cole, can she make the play? She can. Good stuff there for Mackenzie Cole. Just was able to block the ball that came straight at her from Coberly on the first yeah, pitch. Bounced off her shit. Umpire's going out to make sure she's all right. Yeah, it seems like she is, which is good. She looks yeah. like she might pitch another yeah, complete I game think, here. I think, I think they're going to give her a pitch or two to, well, maybe she might just walk it off. Yeah, she's just going to walk it off. Wasn't sure if they'd give her a pitch or two to make sure everything's all right. But either way, that's uh, – in a way, that's a ground out one three. And now Cole will um, attack Smith, or apologies, not Smith, Britain. Britain homered in her last at bat. Um, no, she uh, had a homer in the fourth inning and then walked in the sixth. No, apologies. Yeah, she had that walk in the sixth. Scored a run on that wild play. Yeah, that she she was on third or second when that play happened. She was able to get around and score fairly easily. The drama happened after that. Um, so, yeah, run and a home run for her today in that top of the sixth inning where Central Michigan basically almost went all the way around in their order. Um, yeah. But we're only able to get two runs out of it. You know, could have been a lot more. But Cole was able to get her first strikeout of the day. Um... And it was a big one to be able to preserve this game. And then the Bobcats with the solo home run for Megan McMenemy were able to get back in it just a little bit. Just the, the door is not quite closed yet as that one is fouled off and out of here. Um, it is still very much a game. The Bobcats have not had a very good offensive game. Uh, Bean has pitched a gem. Two runs on only three hits. Um, two of which came from Sophia Bernard, who will lead off the bottom of the seventh. And the Bobcats have been very limited, and Central Michigan haven't been able to really generate much offense, as that one was very inside. Yeah, all I, don't know, I don't know why everybody was grounding a little bit there, because that was about in the middle of the middle of the right-hand battered box there. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe it was just because it was that close. But yeah. either way, full count. 3-2 with one out here in the top of the seventh, and that one is swung on and fouled back. Yeah, 
Yeah, if you're cold, just get the out here. Give the Bobcats a chance in the bottom of the seventh. Britain lines it up, and this is over to McMenemy at short, and there's a good defensive play from her. And the Bobcats are quickly two outs in here in the top of the seventh as they try to fight back. As now and I, it's Alexander up to the plate. She homered all the way back in the second inning to get the scoring started. Yeah, she's had, she's had a great day. Two runs today, two for three with uh, – a home run in the second and then a single last inning. Came around to score on the, uh, on the. And that one is fouled off. Yeah, she came around to score on the Brockmonte single uh, after, after uh, a little bit of the Brockmonte was thrown out at second. Oh, on the count. Cole, the pitch, swung on and it's hit hard out into right field and it is over the wall. Alexander with another home run, her second of the game and Central Michigan extends the lead back out to three. It's a five to two game and the Chippewas look like they are gonna come away from Athens with at least one win. Yeah, almost the same spot as their first home run. Yeah. Just right there in that left center field gap up it, against the shed. It, it was pretty much right on 210. It, I think if the wall's back another foot or two, I don't think it gets over. It was pretty much dead on in terms of length. But it was enough, and it's enough for another run. Five runs, seven hits for the Chippewas today. They've gotten to Cole much more than they were able to yesterday. As that one is way inside for... Bracamonte, one and up. Yeah, Bracamonte with two hits today, two singles. The second one, she got thrown out at second, trying to stretch it into a double. Still drove in a run with it, though. And this one's fouled back, one and one. So now the Bobcats will need an extremely dramatic bottom of the seventh to come away with a sweep. And then we will have the crucial series decider uh, coming up for you just a little bit later on. Uh, it's currently 2.52, so we'll see if that game starts exactly at 3. Probably won't. I we will see. Doubt that. I don't think we're going to get done with this game by then. No. <laughs> As Cole has a 1 and 2 count to work with now against Bracamonte, who had that big hit that got that crazy play going uh, back in the top of the 6th. That scored two runs eventually but she was eventually thrown out at second on that play, as you mentioned. The pitch from Cole was high, two and two. So now the Bobcats will need something wild in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah. I, I'd say first, just get out of this inning, have Cole get out of this inning, and then worry about it. You got a few good hitters coming up, so yeah, with uh, Bernard and Scott runners, Spachek, so. That's all you need. And that's swung on, and it's through for another base hit. So Bracamonte is on base again. The Third middle of that the lineup has stepped up today. That uh, Britton, Alexander, and Bracamonte have really carried the load offensively for Central Michigan. Uh, yeah, that's they their have, eighth hit of the game. Yeah, seven of those have been, <clears throat> excuse me, seven of those have all come from that middle of the order. Britton only with one, Alexander and Bracamonte both with three. Yeah, so um, that's where you've seen a lot of the uh, the power. Britain with just the one hit, but that one hit was a big home run out to center field. So now it's Lucy Cronin up to bat. Um, the one. Cole trying to just get out of this inning. She pitches, and it's fouled off 0-1. Cronin on the day, walked, had a sack fly, and then had, you know, it was a kind of 
inch hitter in for their last time up, which grounded out. As this one is fouled up and over the Central Michigan dugout and back. So 0 and 2. We'll see if Cole can get her second strike out here again. Just her problem has been just getting that third strike today. She's really struggled with that. You know, with the six strikeouts yesterday, she was able to get some of those. Not today. Some of that is just the adjustments that Central Michigan can make out of seeing them. They can mm -hmm. go back and look at the tape a bit and kind of see what to do. As this one's to do. mashed into left. But England's there. It's a quick inning in the end, but the big home run is hit there by by um, Alexander. Alexander, her second of the game. And Central Michigan will look to get out of Athens with a win as we head to the bottom of the seventh after this. You got your go-tos, your standbys, even your favorites. But the beefy, cheesy burgers at McDonald's take you back to where it all began. Your bite zero when you first tasted what a burger should be like. Two perfectly seasoned beef patties stacked with a single slice of melty cheese on a golden bun. Now at McDonald's, get two McDouble burgers for $3. Whatever it is to you, classics are classics for a reason. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular. And welcome back for the bottom of the seventh here. And the Bobcats need a miracle to get back into this one. It is five to two currently as they are looking to try and get to Caitlin Bean who has had a pretty spotless game. Uh, just the one home run to McMenemy in the last inning and the sacrifice fly to spot check all the way back in the second are really her only blemishes on the day. But the only hitter that's really gone to her is at the plate right now in Sophia Bernard. As she fouls back the first one, she has two hits on the day, a double and a single. Uh, and that uh, that double run. led to a run. Yeah, had the first run of the day for the Bobcats. And I mean, Beans showed a little bit of fatigue the last inning or so with, the, uh, with that home run. That's something that we hadn't seen really any power from uh, against her for since about the first or second inning, so we'll see if that can continue as Bernard tried to send that one over the uh, over the fence, but was a bit off on that. So yeah, big cut and miss. Like so 0 and 2, Bernard quickly behind. As you know, the only hitter who's found any real success against Bean today, is apart from McMenemy, on that home run, and she'll try and just get on base because that's all the Bobcats need. You got to just get some runners. As that one is outside, ball one. Spot check coming up and Fogue. Um, we'll see if the Bobcats maybe do some uh, some pinch hitting to see if they could get anything going. As one and two now the count for B. Who's been very efficient and she gets Ooh. another strikeout, a heater. Oh no, it or, tipped. no she tipped, tipped it. Very, very slight tip there. It didn't look like a tip from up here in the box. Uh, so she stays, Bernard stays alive, just about staying alive. And will that prove crucial? We will see as the count remains one and two, trying to get Bobcats fourth hit of the afternoon. The pitch is swung on. This could be a tough play. Third baseman comes over and makes it. Good play over there by Bracamonte at third base. And the Bobcats are down to their final two outs. Spacek up and then Fog on deck. Yeah, so Spacek had an RBI sack fly back in the second to drive home um, Bernard. And we'll see what she can do here. As this one is driven, it could drop and it does drop. 
It was just right in that kind of Bermuda triangle of defenders, literally right in the middle of the three of them over there. Um, you know, Tolmy, Alexander, and Coberly all converging. Coberly got the closest, but none of them could make the play. And the Bobcats have a base runner. It's a good attempt by Coberly. She might have had that in her glove for a second, but she dove out for it, and she might have had it in the glove for a second, but when she hit the ground, it bounced out. And it's a much needed hit for the Bobcats, a single for Spacek. Now yeah. comes up Fogue. Fogue in the second inning had a real deep, she'll ha take strike one. She had a really, really deep hit that uh, it drove Tomey all the way back to the wall where she had to make a great yeah. backhanded catch and on we, the track. We will see if they go for a bunt here to try and get the tying run up to the plate. You need, you need runners on. I don't think it's a well, I mean, good if opportunity they, if, if they get bunt. the runner on. As this one's fouled, it'll be 0 and 2 for Fogue. Um, so yeah, I mean, when you're down to your final two outs, you just got to make something happen. Uh, and you got one runner on base. You're down by three. You're in the bottom of the seventh, the last inning. You gotta, you gotta get something. And you know, when you struggled so much on offense all day, it, it's a struggle. It's been a struggle at the plate today. As this one is popped up, That's will it get play, over? Yeah. It will. Oh, nice, nice little grab. <laughs> nice little grab by a fan walking down on the concourse there. <laughs> and the count remains 0-2. Yeah. As he wipes the plate down a little bit. And Fogue trying to get something going here. As Bean... Steadies herself, trying to pitch this complete game, trying to finish it out, trying to finish the Bobcats off here. As that one is fouled, and it is yeah, it's just fouled. fouled. It's fouled off. It was just it past was. the first base. It did, If it nicked off of first base, it could have been fair, but it didn't. No. Just kind of bounced over the bag. It was very close. It was, it was about six inches foul. Yeah, it's a little bit of a break there for Central Michigan. If that one sneaks by, Spotchak could be going all the way to third, and we could have runners on the corners. I, I think it was lucky. It was lucky for Fogue to even get a bat on that. That that bit, that pitch was a little bit outside. Fogue got lucky to even get a bat on it and almost poke it fair. There's an 0-2, and it's fouled off again. Fogue staying alive right now. Yeah. Bean's been pumping uh, strikes into the strike zone, and. Folks just done a good job of battling them all off. Yeah, we'll see if that can lead to something. As the count remains 0-2, the Bobcats down by three. Here in the bottom of the seventh, they need three here in this inning to keep this game alive. Bean with the pitch, and this one is fouled off, back and out of play. And she's fouled off four in a row now. And we will see if she can stay alive. As they need something here to keep this game afloat and try and go up 2 nothing in the series here with Central Michigan. Fogue digs into the box. She's ready for the pitch. Bean checks what the pitch is. Here it comes. And it's high. Fogue takes one and two. Yeah, it looked like a rise ball that just got a little bit away there from Bean. It looked good for about two-thirds of the way to the plate, and then it just rose up a bit too high. Yeah, so one and two now. Fogue making Bean work for this out. And that one is high, so two and two now. Two straight balls from Bean. It's a good job by Samantha Mills behind the plate to grab those. You don't want to see a runner in scoring position on a pass ball or a wild pitch. Ohio's dugout cheering on Fogue. Fogue. And as she got her looking, great pitch there from Bean. And the Bobcats are down to their final out. And I think it's going to be a pinch hitter here. It is. It's going to be Emily Walker coming in, the sophomore from Jonathan Alder High School. And just trying to get something on base here. And there's still a couple of runs away. And the Bobcats are one out away from dropping this one here at OSF. 
Walker, Walker with some experience in high pressure situations, not in college, but uh, back in high school, led her team to three state final fours in softball, including winning the Division II title in 2019 with Jonathan Alder. Oh, Bobcats yeah, will need, need a hit from her now. They need something big here. And she's up to the plate. Sister of Tori, who was hurt yesterday. A one and oh, that pitch was high from Bean. Bean a third of the way, a third away for pitching a really, really solid complete game. Two runs, four hits. And a very solid game from her as there's a swing and a miss on the inside corner from Walker. That that one was a one. really good pitch there that kind of tied up Walker. Yeah, that, that tied up is a good word. She's kind of trying to adjust down to make get contact. She just couldn't get it. As Bean deals. That one's high, two and one. I think another impressive aspect about uh, King Levine's performance today is not one walk issued. No. Um, the hit by pitch, um, you know, was a base, but really that's all the Bobcats have had, the four hits and the one hit by pitch, and that was it. So Kaitlin Bean has really limited this Bobcat offense today. Walker swings and misses. Bobcats are down to their final strike here in the bottom of the seventh as they look to try and make a desperate comeback here down five to two to Central Michigan. After their seven two win yesterday here at OSF. And don't go anywhere after this one. There's another game coming up right after this as that one is outside so we'll load the count three and two here for Walker. And if you, if, you, if you can get a walk here, you just make that last at bat that much more interesting. Yeah. With the tying run at the plate. Especially with uh, Lauren Juhas coming to the bat with two home runs on the year. The pitch. Swung on and missed. And that will do it here from OSF for game one of this doubleheader. Really good pitching job from Caitlin Bean. She'll get the win and the complete game as the Bobcats fall 5-2 to two to the Central Michigan Chippewas. Don't go anywhere. We will be back shortly with game two of this doubleheader, which should pitch off in the near future. Don't go anywhere. We will be back shortly. <laughs> 